Uh, Harold told you to get over your Michigan win. J.P. Morosi, get him. Good morning to you. How are you? What do you have to say to him? I, I'm doing great, Lauren. And yes. here's here's a little connection. Oh Big my gosh. picture. You, you referenced 90210 in yes. the last segment. And I want to make sure that I'm going to see which of you are really paying attention. Do you remember what the favorite team was of the Walsh family? What was the Walsh family's no, favorite Michigan team? Wolverine. by the bell kind of girl, full house. I wasn't... No, 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 no. No, I know. no. The, I know. The, the, it's not the Giants, and it's not, it's not related to Michigan, Harold. This actually pertains to this segment. This segment. Which team did Brandon Walsh love in that show? Red Red Anybody? Minnesota. The Minnesota Twins. Yes, Harold. <laughs> well done. They moved. That's the essential plot of the show. They moved from Minnesota to L.A. And I recall at some point uh, Jason Priestley wearing a Kirby Puckett jersey on that show. There you go. That was my second topic. But now I feel compelled to start with Max Kepler and Jorge Blanco because I've asked you maybe one million times if they're going to over the course of these last five years, if they're going to get moved. What's your answer to that right now? Yes, Lauren. By the way, now see how we tied it all together. You got the twins, 90210 and the twins here. (laughs) Max Kepler, Jorge Blanco, who much like a lot of our audience right now, they were they were not born when 90210 was a thing. We're bringing in the young audience here. Max Kepler, Jorge Blanco. Yes, still very much available right now on the trade market. The Twins have been quite quiet, I would say, during the course of this offseason. And, and I do believe you look at the marketplace for Max Kepler, there is interest in him as a power bat. And, and the way that you look at it is by trading Kepler or Polanco. And I would mention a team like Toronto, they could address the shortage of starting pitching. Look at those three names that we just saw a moment ago in terms of starters that they have lost. Malley, of course, the surgery. Sonny Gray, free agent. Maeda, free agent. I'm just going to mention this. I'm not I'm not reporting that this conversation has happened. But remember this, this team, Toronto. They've got Alec Manoa there with, with their organization. Not sure if they'll come back and be part of the rotation next year. So if you look at where the Jays could potentially go for more offense, you could consider a situation in which the Twins, who are very good at developing and and really revamping pitchers, perhaps that's a good spot for Manoa to go bigger ballpark. You think about that. If the Jays want to add a bat like a Kepler or potentially a Polanco, they want to address their infield, just keep that possibility in mind. In your back the pocket. The Twins have a t- new explosive We already weapon. heard that, Matt. You used it. You just wanted the floor to be completely yours, and you know it. Well, that's not what it is. I just think it's funny. In fact, it's the two Twins pop have cultural a references to weapon. the Twins in one segment. I love it. He can't let the segment go. Hey, JP, a lot of Boston fans in this building, and they wanted to Oscar Hernandez in a major way. Now what? Where do they pivot? Where to next? Lauren, I believe right now the Red Sox are going to pivot to the pitching side of the equation. They did make an offer to Teoscar Hernandez. Chris Cotillo pointed this out, uh, reporting in the last couple of days. It was a multi-year deal, a two-year deal that was offered, but at a lower AAV than what Teoscar signed with the Dodgers for. So the the name that I was heard actually in the last couple hours uh, to pick up on our earlier conversation is Imanaga. There is some interest for the Red Sox in Imanaga in addition to the teams we mentioned earlier. And part of the reason is by trading sale, it is a pretty right-handed rotation at the moment. So you think about Imanaga, the value that he would have, maybe this is now part of that same conversation you referenced earlier, Lauren, the reports about uh, Yoshida potentially being moved or even Kenley Jansen that that Alex Spire had had, had reported on. Perhaps that becomes an option now for the Red Sox to have Imanaga fill in some of those uh, some of those dollars that potentially could be moving out with those trades. So Boston, a lot of activity mm. right now, trading and free agency. And better do it quickly. 48 hours for Imanaga. You mentioned earlier the Twins have been quiet. You could put the Marlins in that same camp. It has been a constant effort, JP, and you and I talk about this all the time, to surround their young pitching with bats. What's their plan? Well, I think that exactly is the idea, is potentially moving some of their younger arms for bats that are in a comparable status in terms of the, the number of years and actually the upside. There is what they've done so far this offseason. You see it there are many more subtractions than additions. And the big question now for the Marlins, does Jesus Lusardo get traded? There's He has, I would say, comparable, if not even higher value 
than Dylan Cease does just because of how many more years of control Lusardo would have. Braxton Garrett, you put in that conversation. Edward Cabrera in the same conversation. And a lot of the same teams that we've talked about as having potential interest in Cease also would apply to the Marlins arms. The Yankees, for example, are one team that likes what the Marlins have from the standpoint of their young pitching. We'll see if the Yankees could potentially make a second major trade of the offseason. That's that's maybe asking a bit much of the farm system to furnish the prospects for a Soto trade and a Luzardo trade in the same offseason, let's say. But I, I do believe there are some American League East interest in the Marlins starters, whether it comes from the Yankees or the aforementioned Baltimore Orioles, Marlins. who we know they want to get that difference-making starting pitcher before the season begins. Plenty of talent in South Florida. By the way, did Alexis care that you ranked the WBC over your wedding day? Yes or no? So <laughs> I, I, I made clear to her. I, so I did back it up and I showed mm -hmm. her. I said, look, look, here were my edits. I want you to know that it was a tough call in my heart. But I did break the tie where, where getting married to you was was a little bit hot, just a little bit. <laughs> On the couch. And the, and the WBC. On the couch, honey. <laughs> JP Rose, appreciate it.